We're back at it again. I'm your host, International Hannah, and this time we are talking about Kyrie Irving, number 11 point guard for the Brooklyn Nets. He recently posted a tweet on October 27th of a documentary called Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America, and ever since, he's been receiving backlash and criticism. The NBA even released an official statement on November 1st stating that anti-Semitism has no place in our society and immediately after that, Kyrie was suspended from playing ball in the NBA for five games unpaid. Now, Kyrie then attended a press conference where he apologized for posting the tweet and explained deeper as to why he posted it in the first place. Let's listen to what Kyrie had to say. I was like, you know what, let me see if there are any documentaries on Yahweh. So went in the search bar, typed in Yahweh, that came up. Went out and shared it on my platform. That was my night. In terms of the backlash or what people call it, uh, we're in 2022. History is not supposed to be hidden from anybody. And I'm not a divisive person when it comes to religion. I, I embrace all walks of life. You see it on all my platforms. I talk to all races, all cultures, all religions. And my response would be, um, it's not about educating yourself on what Semitism is and what anti-Semitism is. It's really about learning the root words of where these come from and understanding that this is an African heritage that is also belonging to the people. Africa is in it, whether we want to dismiss it or not. So the claims of anti-Semitism and who are the original chosen people of God, and we go into these religious conversations and it's a big no-no. I don't live my way like that. I don't live my life that way. Excuse me, I grew up in a melting pot, and I say a melting pot of all races, white, black, red, yellow, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, and you can see the way I live my life now. I'm not here to be divisive, so they could push their agenda. I don't want to say they, because I'm not identifying any one group or race of people but I'm in a unique position to have a level of influence on my community. And what I post does not mean that I support everything that's being said or everything that's being done or I'm campaigning for anything. All I do is post things for my people in my community and those that it's actually gonna impact. Anybody else that has criticism and obviously wasn't meant for them. But it seems like his apology and explanation was not enough. Kyrie Irving continues to make headlines for reasons that have nothing to do with basketball. Last night, he said he took responsibility for the negative impact his tweet had on the Jewish community. But it wasn't enough for NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, who released a terse statement this morning. Quote, Kyrie Irving made a reckless decision to post a link to a film containing deeply offensive anti-Semitic material. I am disappointed that he has not offered an unqualified apology and more specifically denounced the vile and harmful content contained in the film he chose to publicize. I will be meeting with Kyrie in person in the next week to discuss the situation. Sources say the Nets have delivered Kyrie six items he must complete to return to the NBA team, apologizing and condemning the movie, 500K donation to the anti-hate causes, sensitivity training, anti-Semitic training, meet with ADL Jewish leaders and meet with Joe side to demonstrate understanding. Many sports commentators, along with NBA players, are publicly discussing their views on where they stand with Kyrie's actions, including his former teammate, LeBron James. Me personally, I don't condone any hate um, to any kind, to any race, um, to Jewish communities, to black communities, to Asian communities. Um, you guys know where I stand. And um, it's part of the reason why I didn't air the shop episode, why we kicked that you know, out of the archives, because it was hate conversation going on there. Um, and I don't represent that. And Shaq even taking it as far as calling Kyrie an idiot. Some some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. But us, I know that that you know the game that we used to love and we promote it brings people together. And it hurts me sometimes when we have to sit up here to talk about stuff that divides the game. Now, now we got to answer for what this idiot has done. Uh, you know, I'm I stand for equality of all people. I've always been like that. Don't matter what religion, no matter where you're from. I could say shalom, salam alaikum, ni hao, say bon, because that's how I was raised. So I don't, I don't really want to sit up here and answer questions for what he's done. 
You know, if you're looking at me, it's my job to make people happy. I, I, I can't speak for him and, you know, answer for, for, you know, what he's doing. It's, it's obviously by his answers and the way he answers, he doesn't really care. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar even sent out a statement saying the following, There's little hope that he will change because he's insulated by fame and money and surrounded by yes people. There's no motivation to learn how to distinguish propaganda from facts. All that's left is for the world to decide how it should respond to him. If Kyrie Irving said the earth was flat, oh, by the way, he did that already. All right, that bad example. If he said the sky was purple, disagree with him and you're on the right side. If he said that cows could fly, you know what? Disagree with them. Okay. And he could say anything, but as long as you're on the opposite side of whatever he says, that's the approved messaging. And, and that's very unfortunate that even a guy like Charles Barkley, who has F you money and F you status, has to capitulate. Some people believe they have to go against Kyrie or they will be canceled. Nike recently parted ways with Kyrie for posting the tweet, and the same thing happened to Kanye West in October of 2022 with Adidas. Kanye has been banned from all social media platforms except Twitter and has lost almost all of his partnerships, including his partnership with Adidas, because of the comments he made about Jews in an interview with Drink Champs that was also removed. The Jewish people have their hand on every single business that controls the world. So for all the Jewish media, y'all want to sit down and have a conversation with me? Then let's have a conversation. And let's not forget it also happened to Nick Cannon back in 2020 when he stated that black people are the real Hebrews. He was dropped by Viacom CBS. Actor and producer Nick Cannon this morning uh, fired for making some anti-Semitic comments on his podcast. Viacom CBS announced it is severing ties with Cannon after a long running relationship back to his start on Nickelodeon in the 90s. On the podcast, Cannon called black people the, quote, true Hebrews and talked about some anti-Semitic conspiracy theories as well. Cannon responding to the outrage on Twitter, saying he has no hate in his heart and he does not condone hate speech. But he did not specifically apologize for what he said. said. Now, of course, Nick Cannon apologized for his remarks, just like Kyrie did and Kanye. But there has been a repetitive cycle on how things are being handled if you discuss anything that may come off as anti-Semitic. Now, take a look at this clip I found from Unpack YouTube channel that shows how a Swedish journalist from Radio Sweden was also canceled for asking a question. Unfortunately, the idea that Jews are responsible for their own persecution is not some fringe idea. Take Swedish Public Radio, the country's equivalent of NPR. In early 2015, host Helena Grohl interviewed Isaac Bachman, Israel's ambassador to Sweden, in the wake of two deadly anti-Semitic attacks in Europe. But Grohl didn't ask the Israeli envoy what non-Jews could do to stop this virulent anti-Semitism. Instead, she asked, Do the Jews themselves have any responsibility in the growing anti-Semitism that we see now? Bachman, unsurprisingly, was shocked. Well, I reject the question altogether. The uh, question and, of and how, how, how a woman uh, contributes for the effect of um, being raped is ir irrelevant altogether. I don't think that uh, there is any provocation that Jews are doing. They just exist. As we noted in an earlier video, the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights has found that 60% of Swedish Jews fear to publicly identify as Jewish. That Grohl, a respected member of the media, felt comfortable blaming Jews for their own abuse helps explain why. Grohl didn't stop digging, however. She went on. But a lot of people would look at the Middle East today and say uh, there is conflicts that we know between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And a lot of people might say, uh, we see the Gaza war, we see things that have been happening, that the Israelis and the Jews in Israel have a responsibility to reactions that are coming. After outrage on social media over this bizarre exchange, the public radio station apologized for the interview and purged it from their online archives. But erasing the evidence of bigotry is not the same as confronting and debunking it. In her interview, Grohl said that a lot of people think as she does. It's good to know that some people in the league and entertainment industry are standing with Kyrie, like Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics and Nick Cannon, who recently stated Kyrie is not anti-Semitic.
No, Kyrie Irving is not anti-Semitic. When given the chance to say, are you anti-Semitic or not, he didn't say, no, I'm not anti-Semitic. At the press conference, tell us about that movie, why he did, he said, stop dehumanizing me. And the movie is saying white Jews invented the Holocaust and six million Jews didn't get killed. Okay, I, I know that isn't right. Right. There's a gigantic historical record. Jewish people know when you dehumanize us this way, we know what's around the corner. So in that same statement as those are the tropes that dehumanize Jewish people, the same buck breaking. Was that? I don't really know what that means, to be perfectly honest. The slave masters would bring the buck, the one that gets out of line. So all the other slaves would see lash after lash showed them the power to set an example. This is what you must do to fall in line. So when we see the six things that Kyrie must do to get his job back, right. say, I know Kyrie Irving is not anti-Semitic. So what's your thoughts on all of this? And what's your take on Kyrie? Do you think his sentencing is too harsh and doesn't fit the crime? Or was there no crime at all? Was Kyrie wrong for posting the tweet? Or does he have legs to stand on about this? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.